This is Joy News Prime. Hello, and welcome to Joy News Prime. Two hours of all the news that's news, business, sports, entertainment, and your social media comments and reactions. My name is Israeli. Coming up, traders at a section of one of the thriving markets in the central business district of Accra vow to resist attempts by private developer to evict them from spaces they say they've occupied for decades. Mobile money subscribers could be without any protection unless the needed laws are promulgated to properly regulate operations. That's the view of a member of parliament. Ex Black Stars International John Paintsill gets yet another charge slapped on him, even as he fights off three others, including stealing. On in business, on in business, Chamber of Petroleum Consumers threatens to hit the street if government fails to reduce taxes on petroleum products, plus your market numbers, how the currencies are doing here, to bring it to you. And education authorities at Ahafwa, North District in the Ashanti region, struggle to replace teachers forced to flee a town for fear of black magic. This bulletin is also available across Europe on ABN television. Stay tuned. Some traders at the Cantamanto CMB market in Accra's central business district have vowed to resist the planned demolition of portions of the market. A private developer said to have purchased land there on Tuesday morning moved in to cordon it off, resulting in a confrontation with the traders and transport operators there. Accompanied by police officers, agents of the developer indicated they were there to enforce a court order to possess the land. Join us is Joseph Akable has more. At about 9 a.m., officers of the Ghana Police Service were at the market in the company of a court bailiff. A man suspected to be related to the private developer claiming ownership of the parcel of land was also spotted on the site. The land in question serves as a market and a lorry terminal. The traders and drivers were unhappy about this development. Chairman of the Welfare Committee of the CMB Drivers Association, Nana Kwame Ofuya Mafu, said they are displeased with the development. Last year, I was able to buy it. I was able to buy it. I was able to buy it. We were informed that the land has been purchased last year. We don't think they did the right thing because we have been here since 1980. The Railway Authority approved that we operate as a station here in 1985. We have been here since then. And we pay the Railway Authorities who own the land. So if one person has purchased the land, the Railway Authority must inform us. We therefore don't understand why the land has been sold to an individual while we are still occupying the land. The traders were also unhappy, claiming they pay revenue to city authorities for occupying the land. They want government to give them some time or provide an alternative place for relocation. For some time now, they've been pasting series of court injunctions, but we don't know what is. We, we don't know when they are coming on. This morning, we just came and we the, the police came in with reinforcement, saying we should pack out. We should pack out. But the AMA is where we sell here because they come for a ticket. Uh, uh, what do we call it? Uh, license every year, ten cities. Even if you don't pay, they'll pack your things out. Every morning they come for a uh, ticket, 50 pesos. If you don't pay, they'll pack your things out. Do, so the mayor is aware, the AMA is aware we sell here. They collect money from us. We don't sit here for free. They collect money from us. So they know we are here. So you, just don't, you can't just get up one day and tell us we should just park and leave. We can't just park like that. We have children. We are single parents. I'm a widow. My husband is dead for nine years. I don't, I, what do you want me to go and do? I can't go out. Where do I have to go and sell? You say we shouldn't sit on, uh, by the pavement. We shouldn't sit on the pavement, we shouldn't sit by the roadside. And now we are in the yard, you said we should move out. Fine. Just give us somewhere to go and sell. The traders believe their means of livelihood is being taken away from them and vowed to resist any attempt to demolish the market if city authorities fail to relocate them. 
no pa mi fi fi e pa e no ma wo police cars be pray akakaka ka mi to fo ana mi se da se ya se ye tu ye wa ha oh mi ka ya mo se ye tu ye when i got here this morning i saw a police vehicle i almost fell down when I inquired what was happening, they said they were evicting us. I have called our leaders. They are not answering. They want to lock the gate. So I'm telling the drivers to take their vehicles out. I have children. I need to take care of my children. Joseph Akabli reporting for Joy News. Member of Parliament for Suhum in the Eastern Region, Frederick Koparianza, is warning without the needed laws to regulate the sector, patrons of mobile money services would not have any protection should there be a mishap. The MP, an expert in telecommunication who has been involved in fashioning technology for the industry, tells Joy News it is therefore crucial that the Bank of Ghana and the National Communications Authority work on the relevant laws. The finance minister is expected to respond to an urgent question in the, on the issue this week in Parliament. But Opariansa, who also doubles as the ranking member on the Communication Committee, tells parliamentary correspondent Elting Brobe the Bank of Ghana must act swiftly. Here we are today. Mobile um, money services has emerged as part of the um, evolution of mobile uh, telecommunications and the telecom sector in general. You should also realize that regulations, uh, legislation and all these things that we do here, uh, we do them to cure some kind of mischief. We do make these laws to um, forestall potential problems that we foresee could happen. I believe the Bank of Ghana has the necessary competences to fully examine uh, this particular service. As of now, like most services, the way they start, it's a gray area. Mm -hmm. um, there is no clear law that is for or against it. It is an available technology on mobile networks, and mobile companies are taking advantage. But now that we are yet to be told of any, any lapse or lapses, will it be safe to say that we have the telcos themselves have put in stringent measures to ensure that people don't take advantage of the system, even without a law backing it? Well, the telcos themselves may have their own procedural uh, things to safeguard themselves and their customers. But uh, don't forget that uh, if you leave an industry to regulate itself, it is never the best. So clearly, there would have to be some mechanism that ensures that these things are done according to certain set standards. The other aspect of it is the fact that, for instance, we are currently taxing the um, telecommunication services through the institution of the um, communication service tax. Um, now, you are getting people moving funds across these networks and uh, the mobile entities and other people are taking commissions and earning income. Yeah. They are circumventing the banking sector. They are, there are so many things happening which have some implications on the economy. I'm sure gradually the amount of money that is moving around through this, um, if you will, um, informal financial uh, regime. Mm -hmm. It's quite significant. Yeah. Now, a member of the Finance Committee of Parliament, Alexander Afenyo Marking, who filed the urgent question, says the country could be losing money from the mobile money operations. We need to regulate the sector to help fight crime. One, we enacted Act A04, the Yoko Act. We came up with the Anti Money Laundering Act. We amended it later on. We came in again with the Anti-Terrorism Act. And all these laws were aimed at helping fight crime. Now, if we allow mobile money business to operate without any regulation, what we're basically trying to do is that we are trying to ignore the fundamentals that help our 
security agencies, investigative bodies in detecting crime. If there is any laundering of money, how do these get uh, 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 controlled, checked, and detected? So that is one. Two, our financial sector. If mobile money business continue to thrive without any regulation, people over a period would or may lose confidence in the mainstream banking sector. People would want to keep money in their wallet because of convenience. When that is done, you know the effect on the economy, the banking sector. For the time being, we may not be seeing the effect. But over a period, I tell you that people would eventually lose confidence in keeping their monies in the banks because they would want to keep it in, their, in, the, in the wallet of their mobile phone. So these institutions, the telcos, must at least be, must at least have a separate entity registered for the purposes of rendering mobile uh, money services. Like it happened some time back when the banks were getting into leasing. They were required to register a separate entity purposely for leasing and all that. So that must be done so that the authorities can properly monitor, check the operations and regulate them. As we speak, Bank of Ghana claims that it has some administrative guidelines. Those are not laws. In fact, Bank of Ghana does not have the, the mandate to regulate the telcos. They don't. But, 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 but my understanding is that the telcos, the telcos are regulated by law. By, that law... By the NC, but does not allow them to Get in, provide financial services. The telcos have no such mandate by law to provide financial services. They are supposed to provide telecommunication services. Using your platform for the transmission of money and receipt of same amount to financial services. Now, the Bank of Ghana has indicated it is planning a review of more money transactions in the country this July, a year after the guidelines were introduced. The move should largely assuage industry players who have identified gaps in the guidelines as well as those who believe it overlaps functions of the banking sector. But how are mobile money subscribers taking all this? Joy News' Matilda Vamega has been finding out. So the Bank of Ghana has hinted of plans to review its regulation for mobile money transaction in the country. Will this move in any way address concerns being raised by industry players who believe there are some lapses with regards to mobile money transaction in the country? Today we are here to find out from a mobile money operator here in Accra to find out from him what he makes of this move by the Bank of Ghana and will this in any way improve their service delivery? It's a very lucrative business. Yeah, and it involves a lot of things. So. It's not only really about sending money and receiving money, but see, you can do payment on it. Before, okay, when they started, it was only sending money and receiving money, but right now, they've added another features to it. You can, you can buy airtime, you can pay bills like ECG, DSTV, Go TV, water bill, and even you can pay school fees on it. Wow. Yeah, there are so many payments. So how lucrative is this business? Uh, how do you think, make your uh, money? You see, the money depends on the turnovers. You see, it's based on turnovers. When you do more turnovers with big volumes, you get big commissions. Uh, so it all depends on the turnovers. And, uh, you know, the whole system has come to accept it in the system. So we have the numbers. That is making us get the commissions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now the Bank of Ghana is saying that it wants to regulate, the, review its uh, re regulation with regards to mobile money transaction. What do you make of this cause? Uh, it's a good point. You know, uh, you know, anything involves money need to be regulated, because even as I'm telling you, uh, the fraudsters has also come into the scammers. They've also entered into it. They are scamming people to send them money, and their people are defrauding people even through their mobile money. So if Bank of Ghana comes in with regulations, uh, it will also help and reduce these scammers and other things. Yeah, that's another area. But all depends on, they need to look at it very well. You see, they shouldn't wave it out so much or neglect the bank so much. They should work in hand with them because it will help the whole entire society. Yeah. And you know, uh, this, the business we are doing, you see, it's more like we are doing money laundering. You see, so these things need to be, they need to know where the money is coming from, where it is going, is the parties involved of the money. So I think that is why they need the regulation to go on. 
You see, you know, the moment money is dropped in the account, you can't monitor the money. So it's better there is a way of getting to know who is dropping the money so that they know, you know, um, I don't want to be so open, but, you know, let's say we have barons in the system who comes out with monies that are not so genuine. But the moment they drop it in the account, nothing, you can't trace the money. You see, so that is why I think they want to regulate so that they know where these sources of monies are coming from. Uh -huh. I think that, that, that is where their interest is more on it. Uh -huh. You're watching Joy News Prime. Still to come in the bulletin, chief directors of the various ministries have been told to prepare to take full charge of their units this year as the political heads take off to campaign out of the 2016 election. We'll be back in a bit. Please stay tuned. Chief Directors of the various ministries have been told to prepare to take full charge of their units this year as the political heads take off to campaign ahead of the 2016 election. The absence of ministers and their deputies from their posts for long periods during campaigns has often stalled government business. Minister for Road and Highways Al-Haji Yunus of Husseini Hava says this should not be the case if the chief directors are up to the task. He was speaking to journalists on the sidelines of the 2015 Excellence Awards Night for chief directors at Sogokopa in the Volta region. The awards night was to honor four distinguished chief directors who excelled in the discharge of their duties in 2015. The ceremony brought together all major stakeholders and the civil service and industry players. Minister for Roads and Highways Alhaji Inu Safuseini implored civil servants to adopt to the dynamism of the public service warning that government would not condone consistent underperformance of any civil servant. He also said since this is an election year, campaign activities would take ministers away from their mandated duties and urge chief directors to step in the position of the ministers when they are absent to ensure smooth productivity and administration at their respective ministries. Because I've always been known to hold forth when politicians are not available. In fact, they are, they are the nexus between the political leadership and the bureaucratic establishment. They serve as the link. They're the head of the service. And we are the head of the ministries and agencies as political heads. And so, won the elections. There was a hiatus. He did not form his government immediately. And so civil servants were in charge of running the state until he, he formed his government and appointed his ministers. The same thing, when we go into elections, uh, ministers are not always available. But the ministries, agencies and departments must continue to run. They can't run at the hall. So civil servants step in and take the charge, are able sometimes to reach the ministers when they are even on the field on critical matters. So I'm just reminding them that the time this year is an election year, they will once again be called on to step in and hold the fort while politicians, the pressures of campaigning, take them off the office. Chief Director of the Ministry of Power, Solomon Atim Aswala, was adjudged the best performing chief director. He was honored for the role he played in curbing the power crisis, including the purchasing of the two emergency power barges. Chief Director of the Ministry of Petroleum, Professor Thomas Mbu Akabza, was adjudged the second best performing chief director, while Enoch Hemans Kobna of the Ministry of Education and Godwin Broke of the Ministry of Rules and Highways had the third and fourth positions, respectively. <laughs> Flag bearer of the New Patriotic Party, Nane Kufuado, has promised to reinstate allowances for teachers and nurse trainees. He voted as president in the November polls. A twice defeated flag bearer made the promise at the nursing and midwifery training school at Kolibu, where the party resumed its grassroots campaign in the Blikuma South constituency. He also promised to end corruption and pair trolling when he addressed the people of Choko, a predominantly fishing community here in Accra. A decent educational system and 
a decent health care system. That is the foundation of any decent country. We are going to build a decent health care system here in Ghana. And what does it mean? Those of you who are studying to be health professionals, we have a duty to look after you. And that is why in Kufour's time, when we did not have oil, he was able to pay teacher training allowances and nurses training allowances. Mahama with oil has canceled these allowances. I am saying to you, God willing, I win in December or November. And we're going to create a situation that you are going to find work to do. The country needs all of you to be working, not sitting at home for three, four, five years, but to be working and putting your talents to use for the benefit of the society. That's what's going to happen. May God bless you all and take it easy. Monitoring and evaluation director of the party, Lord Kome, who was on the campaign trail, expressed confidence about the party's chances going into the November polls. Speaking to join us, Mr. Kome said there is a genuine feeling for change among uh, Ghanaian electorates and that the NPP is the only credible alternative that, alternative that has what it takes to let that happen. A former chairman of the Confiscated Vehicles Committee and NDT activist Carl Wilson says an independent candidate will be the best to rule Ghana. Speaking to Francis Avang on the polls earlier, Mr. Wilson emphatically, stated emphatically that the system of governance in Ghana must change and he is willing to assist any independent candidate who can take over the presidency. I will not apologize for doing something that will solve the problem for our people, the youth. I will never apologize for being a Ghanaian that, you know, is thinking ahead. I get that point, sir, but you still haven't answered my question. Are you still a member of the NDC? I just answered that question. No, I think you I'm did an explaining, but it's a straight question, yes or no? If the party, you know, uh, deems to excommunicate uh, Carlson to voice out his opinion mm -hmm. about how he thinks that things are not going well for the country, how the youth are the solution, and how you know things ought to improve for the masses and the youth. Mm -hmm. And they think that uh, you know I'm no longer I, no, I no longer belong to the party. They want to excommunicate me. I will not apologize. Okay. So for this year's election, who should win? An independent candidate, an independent president should head this country going who? forward. I don't know. Who do you have in mind? And, uh, I believe you are of age, mm -hmm. as according, to, according to the dictates of the Constitution. So if I snap a president, you vote for me? If, if, and if only anyone if. goes independent, you only vote for Only if him. you. Let's talk about you. Why you not, ask me. Why not you, the political parties? The why parties in, why independent? Because you have a system of governance where the uh, presidency is linked to the political parties. You see, a typical example is this. I came out and said, Mr. Yao Jan, you know, uh, Mr. Yaojan was the one who organized uh, uh, a full soldiers to lock up the, pa uh, the party office. The president has said many times, he has gone to the president, the president said the guy has not done anything wrong. The president is the head of this, this, this country. Mm. He said, I believe this guy has not done anything wrong. The president in his wise wisdom, President Mills, mm. God bless him, in his wise wisdom, had three different investigations conducted into you know, my, my dealings at the port and in the country. If he didn't do that, then he's not a good president. He mm. did it. Three, one, two, three. On all the three occasions, I came out clean. So when you go to him, he tells you that the guy has not done anything wrong. If you have any, any evidence, bring it. You don't have any evidence. Now, you went against, you know, the wishes of the president, which means, in a, in a sense, you tell me the party is bigger than the president. That's exactly what happened. That is. Ex Black Stars International John Painter has had his legal woes compounded on Tuesday after the police slapped him with another charge, assault of another public officer, one Detective Sergeant William Jamesy. It is the fourth charge he is facing after a complaint was filed against him last month. Joining us is Raymond Aqua was in court.
Ola is charged with stealing offensive conduct and assault of two police officers of the East Legon District. Police prosecutors say Sergeant Jamesi tried arresting John Pencil after he assaulted DSP Manuel Basintele. According to the charge sheet, he reportedly shoved aside the officer and continued his assault on the police commander, injuring him in the process. Reading the charges, police prosecutor DSP David Galley said John Pistol, before landing a punch on the right eye of the police commander, hurled insults at the commander and accused him of flirting with his wife, describing him as a useless police officer. John Pistol pleaded not guilty to all charges and has been admitted to a 5,000 cities bail with one surety. In an interview with Joy News, lawyer Dawudu insisted his client is innocent. All that they brought to court is a misdemeanor that we were breaking the peace. Um, there was an assault on public officer, which we are saying that we are not guilty, that it never happened. What they are accusing us of that never happened. So they will have to come and prove their case. And the court has given us the 14th and 15th so that we can come and start the matter. I believe that when they start, the whole world will hear and know that, listen, all that we are being accused of actually never happened. Yes, there were some uh, misunderstanding, but what they are saying, it never happened. So let them come and prove their case. And you see, the only thing that we are not too happy is that um, some of these challenges are making the whole world to believe that the man is a violent man. You know, he suffered for some of his contract playing outside and here because you travel out and people think that this is the man who batters the wife, which is not true. The case has, however, been adjourned to July 15, 2016. We're taking a break. We have business when we come back. Now, ahead of the Ghana Civil Service, Nana Kwesia Jumeng Dramna has assured there should be a much smoother transition should there be the need for power to change hands after the 2016 elections. He says, unlike the 2000 transition, which suffered some hiccups, the process should be a lot smoother since there is a law mandating the Office of the Administrator General to oversee a timely and proper documentation of the state of the nation to be handed over to the next government. Uh, governance in this country has got, uh, let's say, three dimensions. You have the legislature, the executive, and then the judiciary. Of course, then you have the uh, media, which is considered the fourth, the fourth estate of the realm. But when it comes to the executive, we have uh, politicians who go and come, uh, depending on their fortunes at election time. Then you have the public service, which more often than not we call, it's more of the, like the permanent structure. And throughout uh, the history of Ghana, from post-independence uh, up to now, whether we have lived under military regimes or uh, civilian or republican uh, uh, systems, it's always been the public service, and specifically we're talking about the civil service, that provides a sense of stability in the sense that when everything being is falling down, you have the civil service, the uh, ministers will come, they will receive them, they are giving the necessary uh, uh, notes. And today's message of uh, civil service providing stability was really in relation to the preparation of handing over notes. Mm -hmm. What we mean is, um, because there is now a law which has established the office of the Administrator General, uh, who is supposed to receive all the handing over notes and then hand them over to the incoming president uh, just after elections. It is imperative that the civil service leads the preparation of these handing over notes. And so the chief of staff has directed and uh, the ministries are working on that. But we came here today, uh, or yesterday, basically to, to confirm, look at what has been done to ensure that when the new government comes into power, when I say new government, it will be this new government coming to, 
coming back or another party with it, whichever, they will be receive a, a proper documentation. Majority leader in parliament, Avon Bagbing, has voiced his support for the state funding of political parties. He argues that by not encouraging an objective discourse on the issue, there is an increased likelihood of an abuse of state resources and procurement procedures. The majority leader was speaking at an anti-corruption workshop jointly organized by the Ghana Extractive Industries Transparency International and the Natural Resource Governance Institute. All the leaders in the country is a political leader. And now, if the political leader has to use his own resources, the resources may come from friends, relatives, or whatever, to get to be the political leader. And he is now, by our laws, particularly our constitution, entrusted with the national resources, because he holds them in trust for Ghanaians. And so, on issues of final decision, he takes it. So when you talk about national resources and their utilization, it means he matters. Even though we all matter, but he matters most. And so there is no way that such a person will behave like Father Christmas. Because wherever he got the resources from to assume that position, he has to pay back. And so you are hearing even in this discussion the granting of blocks, and according to the minority layer, on a daily basis, even though the laws we all know are faulty. And who are taking the final decisions on that? It's the political leaders. And so if you don't take interest in how they, they assume that position, and you are leaving it to them, then at the same time you are risking your interest and that is why I linked it up. And we can see that even in our OA revenue, you can see in the agreement between the Ghana government and Cosmos, the initial agreements, you can see the percentage that was given. You can see the efforts of this current government to try and change those agreements. And you can see the application of laws. Pacta sunt servanta. Okay? You're bound by the agreement you've entered into with the other party. Minority leader Otse Chemen Sabons agrees with his opposite number in principle, but suggests state funding of parties will not be effective unless it is limited to political parties with a national presence. Let's, let's you know, not kid ourselves. As we move into the future, many people were coming up with their own political parties. Let's distinguish the serious ones from the non-serious ones. If we apply the yardstick of judging by their performance, in order not to waste the resources of this country. Otherwise, anybody would form a party and say that, well, I form a party, give me some amount of money to be able to run my affairs. But you go into it, you go into the elections, and a yardstick will be established. If you're able to score maybe 3%, I'm just quoting the, the figure, maybe you can determine 5% of the voting populace if you are able to um, garner support within that contest, 5%, 3%, 7%, whatever you agree on, then some percentage will be given to you, right? It will even help us to weed out all these mushroom political parties. Next time around, serious political parties will come up on stream. Otherwise, you know that's a political waste of your own time and resources if you go into that endeavor knowing that it will be the only noise that we're making, right? So let's deal with that. And I think if we're ingenious about that, we can find a good way of handling it. The situation that we have does not create equity. There's no level playing field. You know, the constitution provides that political parties uh, should have equal access to the state media. Do we have it? We don't because one political party, especially the ruling government, would dominate. They will have all the money. They award contracts and people give them gifts. And there is corruption that we are dealing with today. And everybody knows that who gets tainted more is the ruling party. And so they will have the money, rightly or wrongly acquired, to spend on their labor. But the Executive Secretary of the Ghana Integrity Initiative vehemently disagrees. He says, on the contrary, there is documented proof that funding of political parties could increase cases of corruption instead of curbing it. 
as we are talking now, the president has uh, appointed a committee to work on the remuneration of Article 71 uh, of public officers to take effect from January 2013. So they will determine the salary this time, and it will take effect from January 1, 2013. Every year, it will be adjusted by 20% for inflation. So before the elections, a good packet of money will be given to those going to politics to take out there and campaign. Three years after they have, those who have won come into power, they will be given a similar package based on the adjusted remuneration as end of service benefits. They'll be given rent advance for four years, even though we want Parliament to pass a law that will make it illegal for rent, land owners, uh, property owners to take rent for more than six months. A teacher, let's say if I was a teacher, I would come in three months, V8. V and so why should we be talking about funding political parties? They are able to fund themselves. But they still are not OK, because they say they have to pay back some of them to take loans to campaign. So now you put people who do not qualify, give contracts to people who cannot, who cannot carry out the projects. They try to implement pro, uh, programs, and you go there, and there are potholes on the roads. And you are not able to tell them that you are doing the wrong thing, because you are already taking something from them. We're taking a break. We'll bring you international news thereafter. Right, so she's more and more becoming my sidekick. Miss G is here to tell us what's coming up on Journeys Interactive. Haven't I always been your sidekick? More and more. No, after so Mrs. Lai, like I'm the next, I know that for sure. <laughs> anyway, how are you doing, Israel? I'm good. How about you? Uh, very well, thank you. So, 15 basic school teachers at Impapasu, number two in the Ashanti region, have been transferred and blocked upon request over fears that they would come under a spell of black magic. The teachers claim they have been seeing blood and other suspicious objects on their chairs and tables. So we are asking, do they have cause to suspect someone is after them? Yeah, honestly, I think so, because their life is a risk, if it's actually a matter of juju or all of these blood things. So if your life is a risk, you're asking for a transfer, I think it's understandable. All right, so street funerals have become a serious issue, especially in cities across Ghana. In Accra, you cannot drive around town without running into funerals in the middle of the road, leaving you stranded. Some of you think the situation is alarming. What can you do to keep this practice? Since there is no recreational place for them to go for their funeral, that's why they're going for those things. And I learned authorities also give them uh, they go ahead to do it because some they'll be telling you they'll go to the police and then they give them the go ahead. All right, so join me in about 40 minutes for more details, Israel. All right, thank you very much, uh, Ms. G. But up next, we bring you the headlines. Now, traders at a section of one of the thriving markets in the central business district of Accra have vowed to resist attempt by private developer to evict them from spaces they say they've occupied for decades. Mobile money subscribers could be without any protection unless the needed laws are promulgated to properly regulate operations. That's the view of a member of parliament. Ex Black Stars International John Painter gets yet another charge slapped on him, even as he fights off three others, including stealing. In business, Chamber of Petroleum Consumers threatens to hit the streets if government fails to reduce taxes on petroleum products. Now, to the story that uh, Ms. G was talking about earlier 15 basic school teachers at Impapaso No. 2 in the Shanti region have been transferred on block upon request over fears they could come under a spell of black magic. It follows alleged persistent discovery of blood stains in the classrooms of the local Roman Catholic primary and junior high schools. But as education authorities in the Hafor North South District investigate the phenomenon, the students have been left to their fate as finding replacements for their exited teachers has not been an easy task. Teachers of affected schools say they have been living in fear 
for what they describe as continued spiritual attacks on them. At least on four occasions in recent times, strange items including crash eggs, believed to be for rituals by unidentified persons, have been found in classrooms. The items, according to the teachers, are placed either on the teacher's chair or table. They also claim of what they identify as Arabic inscriptions in blood are boldly displayed on the whiteboard and walls of the classrooms. Attempts by authorities to find an antidote to what has become known as spiritual battle have proved fatal. One of the teachers tells Insha News the transfer is inevitable because their lives are in danger. His voice has been muffled. Some unknown persons come to our classrooms to use blood to write Arabic contents on our boards and the walls. And this continued for quite a very long time. And so we felt that our lives may be in danger. So we decided to seek for transfer because the environment became hostile to us, especially when we raised the issue of the blood stains we see in our classrooms. Anytime we, we come from public holidays, we see these things on our walls and it's a threat to our lives. Now, the family of a toddler who was sexually molested by her father's nephew is appealing for support. This is the five year old girl and her friends are just reading it. said to be a terrible thing. The family of a lady repeatedly defiled the house and parents were aware. The abuse has resulted in serious damage to the little girl's genitalia and is currently keeping up with a good support. This is a five year old Ephiahian who is said to have been defiled. Thank you. 
lab investigation not and said Thank you. 
says so is the media. Thank you. 
Right, so there's a uh, Euros taking place, but there's we have more than Euros. Who's playing today? Which teams are playing today? Portugal and Iceland. And how's it going? I'll, I'll tell you the results in a bit. <laughs> okay. All right, you just take it away with sports. Welcome to the sport on Prime. Hi, I'm Gary Al Smith, and we'll do the Euros in a bit, but we begin at home. And Hearts board member Frank Nelson wants the club to make home advantage count in the second round of the league. At the points, they were top. However, by the time the 15th game came around, they had slipped. Season, I mean, first round, we lost almost about 11 points home. And for us, we think it's uncomfortable, it's not acceptable, it's not something we should do. But again, having said that, you have not identified any reason why it happened. But I believe it's just football because we go away and we match it. So that could be attributed that, oh, since we win away and you are losing at home, it's part of football. But as in football, you must take advantage of your home ground. And we have seen this to be a very big challenge, a very big source of worry because, like I say, if we've been able to win one or two matches in our home match this season, I'm sure we would have been at the top of the league as we were speaking to the bet. It has happened. Let's leave the pass. We'll make amends. We'll try. We've spoken to our players. We'll continue to engage them. We'll continue to engage with the technical department, every stakeholder to make sure that the craft stadium becomes comfortable. People we attributed it to the hostility of our supporters initially. But uh, take it or whether it's good in good faith or bad faith, the plan that gave us two band stadium, we played without the supporters at the end of the day. We lost against Liberty. So one will not 
that conclude that it's because of the supporters. So a general principle that we have lost in our home, not just for this season, it's been a trend for the past season. And uh, we think we've noticed that we'll begin to make amends to understand that our home ground and home is equally important. It's not a do or die, it's not a must that we must win at home, but it's just a principle that your home, you must be comfortable at your home. But if it happens you lose at home, you must lose for a good cause and you lose when you play good football. So let's hope that we'll be able to cut that situation and it doesn't repeat again. I'm not In general news, Neil Ante van der Poy, the sports minister, is speaking. He's saying something that a lot of people have wanted to hear for a long, long time when it comes to the development of sports. According to the minister, companies would enjoy tax reliefs for supporting the sporting industry. I want to assure you that at the end of a year, when you are compiling your tax, do well to inform us immediately for us to also give the recommendation to the Ghana Revenue Authority to make sure that what we are committing to the sports is granted as tax incentive to you. <laughs> and I can assure you that will be done so that you'll be encouraged to do more. <laughs> and I will take this opportunity to talk to the corporate Ghana to understand that our doors are open. Any penny you spend on sports development in this country, you will be sure to have a tax relief on that penny. That is a guarantee, that is our assurance for corporate support to come in to help us. Government cannot develop sports alone, but government will create the enabling environment for individuals and corporate institutions and corporate industry to direct investment into sports. It's going to be a win-win situation for us. Neil Ante van der Poel there. And there's some news that's just coming in. We didn't have time to put it together. However, Neil Ante van der Poel and the Sports Ministry have warned the Ghana Football Association that if they meddle in the organizing of friendly matches for the third time, they will take action. Don't forget that the Sports Ministry warned the GFA recently when the, um, the country's football governing body organized a friendly with Canada without the knowledge and the participation of the sports ministry. Recently, the GFA also organized a game on its own together with their Japanese counterparts, a game which saw Ghana lose. Now, in a letter that we have seen, and that we will show you subsequently, and also on my journal line, Vincent Opoa Samoa, the deputy minister, signs that letter and says that if it happens for the third time, they will take action. Strong words indeed from the sports ministry. In the Barclays Premier League, news of signings have come in just uh, before we came on air again. Sofian Feguli has been signed from La Liga to West Ham United. Also, Everton have appointed Southampton manager. It's 3-2 down in the NBA finals, and it's 1-1 between Portugal and Iceland. Bian Hassan equalizing from an earlier goal scored by Luis Nani. You head over to... Um, our social media pages, Twitter at Joy Sports GH for live tweets of the game. If you are by your radio, you might want to tune in to Joy FM. I'm Gary Alsmith, that's the sport for now. Catch you later.